Hello everyone and welcome to my newest gameplay and holy fuck this is going to be a long one It is going to be my Sunday project I am going to release one video per Sunday And that is because this is going to be very long So you know this game it's MotoGP4 It represents the 2004 season for you know for all three classes 125, 250 and MotoGP and well, in the game, well, uh, I'm going to show you the different things, like, for example, okay, let's start, you know, from, uh, from the bottom, road racing team Hungary, with, uh, uh, with an Aprilia, Elite Grand Prix, uh, Thomas Luthi team, I think, I think he, it was the team he rode for in 2004, you know, with a Honda, also with a Honda, but with a different one, the Ajo Motorsport one, Semperucci Malaguti Racing with a, Ma with a Malaguti, one of the weirdest bikes in the game. Uh, well, this is not so weird because this is actually just an Aprilia, but you know, Gilera Racing Team. The Onda Gaia with, you know, the exact same model of, of Elite Racing. This team, I think, uh, I think it was Julian Simon's team in his debut season, I think it was. Matteoni Racing, very classic uh, 125 team. I think it is dead now that team, but yeah. Uh, well, uh, yeah, with an uh, with an Aprilia, Mirko Jansante, I think it was. Uh, Worldwide Communications uh, team with an Aprilia, Steve Jenner's team. Steve Jenner, very you know, very iconic guy. Uh, Master MX Honda Aspar team with an Aprilia. You know the well, I, the Aspar team used to be the the king of two strokes, well, it became the king of, of 125 two strokes in a couple of years, in like 2006 or so. KTM Red Bull, uh, you know, with Harold Bartol back when they, you know, when, back when KTM basically started. Derby Racing Team, this is just an Aprilia, but you know, with a different, with a, with a few different adjustments, because it was, uh, you know, because it was used by Derby. All Spanish team when it comes to the riders, Jorge Lorenzo and Angel Rodriguez. Safilo Oxido, uh, Lucio, Lucio Cecchinello racing team. Uh, I do not remember the, the rider, I think it was Roberto Locatelli. You know, Aprilia, top level Aprilia. And also another top level Aprilia with for, for the Seedorf Racing with Hector Barbera and Alvaro Bautista. I remember those. And you know the, the team Scott uh, with uh, Andrea Dovizioso and Simone Corsi and they were using the 2003 championship winning Honda that championship was won by Dani Pedrosa and well we can start you know with the Keep the, Keep the France, Scrap GP uh, Ervan Nigon I think it was the guy that, that drove this bike I'm not entirely sure, oh yeah I can, I, I can see the, the goddamn uh, riders Okay. Oh, Arnovin Sen. Oh yeah, he, he actually uh, went over to to 250. Mm, but damn it, I always forget that he he even rode 250s at some point. Aspar Junior Team, you know, low level Aprilia with Hector Favel and Dirk Heidolf. The Yamaha TZ uh, TZ 250 with Naoki Matsudo and yeah, and Ervan Nigon. Yeah, forgot. Uh, Aprilia, uh, you know, Aprilia Germany with Chas Davis and Johann Stiefel. Back when Chas Davis looked like shit, now he's a very good rider, but back then it looked like absolute shit. Like, I was like, I remember watching him and I was like, why is this guy in the World Championship? And well, I mean, Stiefel wasn't better, but you know. Uh, Troll Honda BQR. Okay, D. What? Okay. Oh, yeah. The the, the 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 names are changed. The this bike is the Thopini Abruzzo team with Anthony West and Hugo Marchan. Anthony West, the king of uh, wet racing when it comes to motorbikes. And you know Honda Big uh, Troll Honda Big QR with uh, uh, damn it Alex Devon and Eric Bataille. Eric Bataille from Andorra, very small country. Campetella Racing with Franco Batani, uh, Silvain Gintoli, another guy that looked like shit but eventually became good. And Joan Olive. Uh, Joan Olive, well, one of the guys. It is kind of weird that Joan, Joan Olive was in the same team as, you know, at one point there was a team that was uh, Tony Elias, Joan Olive, 
Dani Pedrosa and Casey Stoners, numbers 24, 25, 26, and 27. He didn't work. It didn't work for him. Okay, yeah, uh, MS Aprilia team, but you know, MS, I think it's tobacco, I'm not entirely sure. So yeah, it's not shown in the game. Uh, with Manuel Poggiali from San Marino. And another guy from San Marino, Alex De Angelis. Uh, yeah, this guy also had, I think, some sponsorship from alcohol or tobacco, I do not remember, but yeah. But these two bikes are basically the same, but you know, different teams, technically. Uh, for, uh, Honda Gresini Fortuna, because yeah, it was sponsored by tobacco, with Tony Elias and, Ro and Roberto Rolfo. Tony Elias now racing AMA Superbikes. And yeah, Lucio Cecchinello Racing also had a bike in, in 250, but this time it was for Randy De Poniet. By the way, I've forgotten, in 125 there was Casey Stoner with the, with the KTM. Casey Stoner and Mika Calio. Uh, Repsol Aspartin with Sebastian Porto and Fonsi Nieto. Those two guys look very good. And well, Nieto like parting a bit too much, and I think Porto was, you know, kinda weak when it comes to the psychology, like he became depressed or something like that. So yeah, didn't really work out for him, sorry. And you know, the top team, it's the Telefonica Movistar Junior team uh, with Dani Pedrosa. Uh, he would be the 2004 champion, uh, you know, and well, with Hiroshi Oyama. Very, very good bike. It worked, this bike basically worked out as much as until 2008 or something like that. Jesus Christ, it, it worked. It was a good bike. Okay, we start with, you know, MotoGP and with a very shitty bike. Yamaha R1 powered Harris uh, B, uh, WCM. It is weird how the Yamaha Red Bull guys eventually end up doing sh end, end up ended up doing this. This bike was absolutely shit. You know, the chassis wasn't good. It was very hard to set up, you know, to tune the bike to get a, to get a, a good uh, you know a good uh, a good clean bike out of it. And yeah, it didn't work at all. Uh, and you know, also MotoGP and they were using, you know, like 40 horse, 30, 40 less horsepower. Oh god, this bike as well. Proton KR MX2 with Novatsu Aoki and Curtis Roberts. This was a failed project. I think, yeah, I think it was, you know, self made bike or something like that. Yeah, I do not exactly remember, but yeah, no. Dunlop tires, that didn't help. Another failed project, the Aprilia RS Cube, with Jeremy McWilliams and Shane Byrne. Shane Byrne, one guy that, I guess it looked good for a while, but you know, then it fell down. Uh, you know, well, so, yeah, it looked good for a while, he came into MotoGP, then it looked bad, and now he's a multi-time British Superbike champion. I don't know, life is weird, I guess. Uh, Team Suzuki. Uh, with no major sponsorships except for Motul, I guess, but I think that's that's a technical sponsor or something like that. So yeah, no major sponsor for this bike with Kenny Roberts and John Hopkins. Uh, this bike never, uh, you know, this bike rare was, I don't know, was a failure from the start, and then it became good after I think it was 2006. But yeah, in 2004, this bike was very shitty. And also, you know, John Hopkins was overtaking Kenny Roberts Jr. most of the time, which he, which wasn't good for Kenny. Although, you know, Kenny ended up, do, uh, thanks to failing uh, with the Suzuki, ended up using, ended up in his dad's team, Proton, uh, you know, the Proton team. Uh, and when the, uh, when Proton, uh, when the when the team Roberts actually ended up using Honda engines. And that was actually good, you know, he eventually ended up with a podium back in t uh, two years after, in 2006. Okay, this one. The never sponsored bike. Does this bike look like a Visa card? Good! It should look like a Visa card, except Visa never sponsored it. They were going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Visa never sponsored this bike. Although they should have done it. And that was part of, you know, part of the beginning, part of the beginning of the end of Dantin MotoGP team. You know, Ruben Chaus, Neil Hoxon, Chaus ended up with a podium, I think it was, in the very weird race of Qatar of 2004. Another factory bike with very little sponsorship, Kawasaki Racing Team, with Shinji Nakano and Alex Hoffman. 
Not so good bike, but well, Nakano tried. Nakano really tried to make this bike work. It wasn't that good, but you know, they they tried, they tried. Also, you know, they they were using Bridgestone. That wasn't good. Yamaha Tech Troa with Marco Melandri and Norikabe. Well, basically a second rate uh, Yamaha. Nothing special. Ducati team, you know, oh yeah, by the way, the sponsors were one bike was sponsored by Fortuna. I think it was Melandri's bike. And Abyss Bike wa was sponsored by uh, Fortuna's uh, parent company, Galois, the French ones. Yeah, it was very, very weird because, you know, the official Yamaha team did the same, but, you know, in reverse. Like, you know, Rossi was with Galois and the second rider, which was Carlos Checa, uh, was with Fortuna. So, yeah, it was very weird because, you know, the two Fortuna bikes weren't equal and the two Galois bikes weren't equal. It was, you know, it, it was a weird mix. Okay, the official Ducati, the 2004 Ducati, because yeah, this is a 2003 model. This one is 2004. With Loris Capiros and Troy Bailey's. It was a. It was an uncontrollable bike. It was good, it was fast, in a straight line it was very fast. But goddamn it, make, uh, make it around a turn. <laughs> try, to make it, uh, try to make it go around a turn. That's when problems come. Uh, Honda Repsol with one of the worst seasons they had. This was completely like luster for, for them, you know, with Alex Barros and Nicky Hayden. I do not know if I should blame the riders, I do not know if I should blame the team, but yeah, they weren't there. To the point, you know, two, uh, there are two Honda teams and they are rated better than the, uh, than the factory one in this game. Which are the Camel team, uh, I think it was, yeah, Pons, yeah, the, the team manager was Sito Pons. Sito Pons once again, you know, almost basically making a better job than the than the factory bikes. <laughs> he did that a couple of times. Uh, yeah, and well, this time with Max Biaggi and Makoto Tamada. Biaggi had his own fair share of problems because he switched from uh, Yamaha to Honda, and that was kind of weird for him. Although, you know, he was very good on the first race. He almost won against Rossi. And yeah, uh, Tamada, well, Tamada took profit of a very weird race. In 2004, there were two very weird races when it comes to MotoGP. One was Qatar, and the other one was uh, uh, the, Bra the Brazilian GP earlier in the season, and that was won by Makoto Tamada. Telefonica Movistar Honda, you know, uh, they had also a team for the big bikes, and it was with Seti Ibernau and Colin Edwards. Uh, well, uh, Seti Ibernau was a title contender, you know, the, basically the main, uh, the main rival Valentino Rossi had. And Colin Edwards, well, he struggled. He wasn't very good with the with the Honda. He uh, the last season he was with the Aprilia, and I guess that didn't help him because you know he wasn't used to the Honda, and never really got uh, got used to it. I think you know I think it was one year after or two years after he ended up in Yamaha, and he did a much better job there with Yamaha. And you know the Yamaha, the main Yamaha team, the factory team. With Valentino Rossi and Carlos Checa, I have already uh, told you the the thing about the about the sponsor. And yeah, what's I don't, I don't think I have much to talk. You know, it was Valentino Rossi with Yamaha on his first year, and he made it made it work. So yeah, uh, well, and this gameplay is going to be fairly special. Oh yeah, by the way, I can, I can, uh, I want to show you the the goddamn uh, schedule. So you know, we are going to start in South Africa. Uh, in Welcome, also known as Fakisa Raceway, or something like that. No, Fakisa Freeway. Uh, Circuito de Jerez in Spain, you already know that because you know of MotoGP2. Fairly technical circuit. Le Mans, but it's not exactly the same. Oh, no, no, yeah, sorry, they use the, for some reason, they use the, not the 2004 version. Because I guess they are. They were fucking lazy and did not update the track, even though they should should have done it. Because it was changed like in 2002 or 2003. Uh, Mugello Circuit, you know, you've also know it. Very, very long straight. A lot of left-right and right-left combinations. Circuit de Catalunya, you also know it. It's, you know, it's my home track. I live basically, you know, 15 kilometers away from the, from the entrance to the track. 15, 20 kilometers. I mean, it's very short. I could, I could basically cycle to the track. Uh, TT Circuit Asen, uh, the last game that has the proper TT Circuit Asen. It, it, 
brings a tear to my eye. <laughs> uh, oh god, this almost symmetrical circuit. The, uh, the Autodromo, Autodromo Nelson Piquet in Jacarepaguá, near Rio, Brazil. It is close to symmetrical, it is very similar both ways. I mean, if you really look at it, I mean, it's, it is actually similar. And that's kind of weird when you are riding it. Uh, Saxon Ring Circuit, you already know that for MotoGP2, it's a very short circuit, very, very technical uh, when it comes to the first part. Then you have the longest left hander in history because Jesus Christ, you never really stop turning left except for that. L that little street at the, at the bottom of the map, but yeah, it's basically, you know, all turning left all the time. Another track that is basically all about turning, except for, you know, four, four very short straights, I mean, they are fairly short, to be honest. But yeah, the the, the decider of the track goes be between, you know, the start of the lap and the, and the back straight. Oh yeah, the Autodrome Masaryk de, of Breno in the Czech Republic. Very, uh, you know, people love this track for some reason. I've never been a fan. Never been a fan. I do not really like it, to be honest. Never been a fan. The El Autodromo de Storil. I do not remember the, the technical name. I guess, you know, I guess they are calling it. The, oh, yeah. Autodromo Fernanda Pires da Silva. <laughs> now I know it because it, it was the, the builder. The, they named it after, after her. So yeah, it's the sh it's the slowest track in the in the Grand Prix circuit, I think. I think it's the slowest one, even though it has one of the longest straights. The street is very long. Then you also have Motegi, a track all about uh, you know start stop start stop, a bit like Le Mans. I guess that's why I do not perform well in any of them. But, you know, and I'm talking about the start stop, the king of the start stop circuits, Los Ail. It was the first time you know the first race. Uh, in Qatar, and it was in the daylight, with a l very high temperature, temperatures, very slick tarmac, not so much grip, and the conflict, you know, with the burnout uh, with the scooter uh, of Valentino Rossi. <laughs> Jesus Christ, never a moped brought so much trouble to MotoGP. <laughs> it was a freaking moped, you know, it just started the controversy. Sepang, the only Tilke, uh, tilke uh, circuits in, in this game. That is kind of weird because, you know, nowadays it's like, you know, any game has a lot of Tilke, uh, tilke circuits. I'm not a, f a big fan of Tilke and I'm not a, a fan of Sepang. I don't think it's very good for motorbikes, but yeah, it's part of the schedule. And meanwhile, you know, from one of the worst tracks when it comes to motorbikes to the top track when it comes to motorbikes, or, well, nowadays it's the top one, it used to be the second one be behind us in Phillip Island. It's a track, I mean, there's a lot of turning, but it's super fast, it's so fucking fast and it's lovely. And okay, the Autodromo Ricardo Tormo, uh, just outside Valencia, in Cheste, the town is Cheste, and it's a very, very slow circuit. I don't know if this is slower than, Esto than Estoril, it's very close between Valencia, Estoril and also Saxon Ring. And yeah, this, the game also has three extra tracks, uh, Suzuka, Paul Ricard, you know, from MotoGP1, basically, both are, both are ported from there. And we also have this training circuit that it's for the very long tutorial, you can do a fairly long tutorial, I've already passed it, because, you know, then you unlock this. And I guess after every season, I, I guess I'll try to, you know, to make a, a race, you know, around Suzuka, uh, Paul Ricard and training. Even if it's shorter, because, well, you can already see the total length of the, of the championship I'm going, I'm, going to, I'm going to try. Full race length all the time. It's going to be 48 races, it's going to be around 3,000 miles for 4,800 4, 4, kilometers. And yeah, it is going to be awesome. I love this game, it is one of the, my favorite PS2 games. I don't know why, because you know it's actually not that good, but I love it. <laughs> and well, that's gonna, we are going to spend quite a lot of time with, uh, with MotoGP2. So yeah, I'm uh, sorry, MotoGP4. So yeah, see you next time for the first race, uh, for first race of the season in Fakisa Freeway in South Africa. Bye bye!